sort of form a family morning prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, who never failest to help and govern those whom thou dost bring up in thy steadfast fear and love, keep us, we beseech thee, under the protection of thy good providence, and make us to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Jeremiah 27 through 13. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side, denounce him, let us denounce him, say all my close friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be enticed, then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior, therefore my persecutors will stumble, they will not overcome me, they will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. It seems like uh, with almost every kind of uh, gathering or, or get-together or, or party or whatever I've, I've ever been to at somebody's house, uh, the good ones anyway, uh, at, at some point in the evening, uh, no matter how hot or cold it is outside and no matter how big or small the house is, uh, at, at some point some people will end up outside, um, even just standing out in the yard or, or in the street. Uh, now maybe that's just my experience, but I suspect it's, it's not. Uh, it's almost as if a house, any house, just can't contain a good gathering of good friends and it's just got to burst out into the world. This passage from Jeremiah uh, contains one of his most famous images. Jeremiah, uh, unlike most of the rest of the prophets, wrestles with his prophetic calling, not just at the beginning of his ministry, but throughout it. And for the most part, has a, a pretty miserable time. Uh, he is rejected and despised. The story just before uh, this passage that we read at the beginning of chapter 20 illustrates this. Uh, he's beaten up and jailed by a priest because he didn't like what Jeremiah was saying. In verse 9 here, <clears throat> Jeremiah pictures God's word as a fire burning in him, uh, burning in his heart, burning in his bones. And so even though most of the time he does not want 
to be a prophet, really. He does not want to have to speak God's word uh, to people, God's people, to those in power. Uh, and, and even though they usually don't care what he says or act on it, still, when Jeremiah thinks about giving up this calling, he can't. Uh, because the word of God is it burning within him. Uh, can't be contained within just himself. It's got to break out into the world. Uh, it, it, it's too good and, and, and necessary and powerful not to be proclaimed. Probably in your Bible, uh, this passage is set in lines. Um, it's a kind of poem. It's very like a psalm. Uh, and there are many psalms that express similar feelings. One of those, I think, is our appointed psalm uh, for today, uh, this Sunday, Psalm 69. Uh, the psalmist there uh, is, like Jeremiah, uh, in a bad way. Uh, he is overwhelmed um, by his sins within him uh, and, and by his attackers outside. And he says in verses 7 and 8 of Psalm 69, uh, it is for your sake, God, that I have borne reproach, that dishonor has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my mother's sons. Then he says in verse 9, zeal for your house has consumed me. Uh, in other words, passion for the temple, for the worship of God, consumes him and eats him up. Uh, like Jeremiah is is burned up with passion to speak God's word. Now, this phrase from Psalm 69 uh, might strike you as uh, being familiar, <clears throat> because in the Gospel of John, chapter 2, when Jesus is cleansing the temple, uh, driving out the money changers and, and, and saying, do not make my father's house a house of trade, John writes that Jesus' disciples remembered that it was written zeal for your house will consume me. So <clears throat> passages like Jeremiah 20 and Psalm 69 point us forward ultimately, of course, to Christ himself. And the New Testament invites us to see Christ and what he's up to through the lens of these Old Testament texts. Jesus is a kind of new and better Jeremiah. Uh, like Jeremiah, Jesus is a prophet uh, whose prophetic uh, message often specifically concerns the coming destruction of the temple. Jeremiah prophesied about the destruction of the first temple. Jesus prophesies about the destruction of the second temple. Jesus, like Jeremiah, is full of the Spirit. Uh, and, and he says in the next chapter of the Gospel of John, chapter 3, that he whom God has sent utters the words of God. <clears throat> For Jeremiah, what God's people need to do in the midst of uh, the national disaster that is going to overtake them is return to the worship of God. For Jesus, <clears throat> what God's people need to do uh, in the midst of their own coming national disaster is, as Jesus goes on to say in John 4, worship the Father in spirit and truth, uh, a worship we find as we read on uh, that centers on Christ himself. Jesus is a kind of new and better psalmist. Uh, even as his life is threatened, even as he suffers, zeal for God's worship consumes him. And like the psalmist, he worships and, and calls all creation back to God's true worship with him. Uh, this is a strange time for our own nation, uh, like it was for those in Jeremiah's day and, and those in Jesus' day. Uh, and it may be confusing and worrisome. But the call of Jeremiah uh, and of Christ stands that the way through anything is worship is obedience to Christ. Uh, no matter what is going on in the world uh, or in our own lives, that is what God calls us to do, uh, to trust him 
and to obey Him. That is the only way that anything will be made right. So then, may we take these words, the words of God, to heart. Uh, and, and may our hearts burn with God's word. May our lives express it. Uh, may zeal for God's worship consume us. And may we look to Christ, uh, himself the word of God incarnate, and remember that through him uh, we may say with Jeremiah that the Lord is with me.